speaker's announced policy of January 6, 2015. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, for up to 30 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the date was April 14, 1970. The mission was Apollo 13. And the message was, Houston, we have a problem. Mr. Speaker, that was a clarion call from a mission that was in trouble. Tonight, I ring and sound this clarion call from the people of Houston, Texas, because we have some troubles. We have troubles that are related to flood waters in Houston, Texas, that inundate our city and cause great harm and great damages. Mr. Speaker, I'm on a mission of mercy tonight, a mission of mercy on behalf of my constituents in Houston, but also on behalf of all of those in Houston and the immediate area. I'm on this mission of mercy, but I'm not without a solution. We have a solution to the flooding problem in Houston, Texas, and that solution is H.R. 5025. It is a bill that will help to mitigate the flood damages. It will not eliminate the flood damages in Houston, Texas. I'm not sure that we can construct a system that will totally eliminate all flood damages in Houston, Texas. But I am sure that we can mitigate, that we can eliminate many, that we can do something about the magnitude of the problem. And I am absolutely confident, Mr. Speaker, that my mother was correct when she informed me that there will be times in life when you cannot do enough. No matter what you do, you won't be able to do enough. But she also went on to explain to me, Mr. Speaker, when you cannot do enough and more needs to be done, you have a duty to do all that you can. And I'm here tonight to let this Congress know that we can do more to help in Houston, Texas. We can do more to mitigate the flood damages that we have in Houston, Texas. Mr. Speaker, this bill, H.R. 5025, would accord $311 million. This money would be for projects that have already been approved that are related to flood control in Houston, projects that have not been completed. This bill would authorize this funding up to 2026. And this bill is needed in Houston, Texas, for many, many reasons. I shall share but a few, and then I'm going to yield to a colleague, and I will say more. But it's needed because it will not only mitigate the flood damages, it would also help us with jobs for those who are interested in jobs. This bill will create 6,220 jobs. The people who acquire these jobs will pay taxes. These taxpayers will help us in turn by uh, helping with some of our fire, our police, uh, schools. There are many ways that these tax dollars will be used, including a good deal of them sent to Washington, D.C. to help others across the length and breadth of our great country. This bill will save lives. I will say more about that, and my colleague may say something about this as well. But I think it's important for us to note now that this bill will have a meaningful, powerful, significant impact on Houston, Texas. And I'm proud to tell you that this Congress has been helpful. Uh, we have already accorded for one project uh, $212 million, but we need $34 million to complete the project. This is the Braze project in Houston, Texas. $34 million more to complete it. This project is in an area where we do get flooding, in the Maryland area. Uh, this project would help prevent homes from being flooded and cars from being damaged. Uh, this is a great project. We just need to finish the project. The project was authorized in 1990 and is projected to be finished in 2021, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, while I do want to make sure we complete it, I do think that it's taking us a bit too long to complete the Braves project. Mr. Speaker, the Golden Gate Bridge, with all of its majesty, only took four years approximately to complete. The Hoover Dam, a great monument to what we can do to uh, channel water and turn that water into electrical power. Uh, that only took five years to complete. 
the Erie Canal. We didn't have the advances in technology that we have today, yet the Erie Canal took eight years to complete. Mr. Speaker, I spoke of Apollo 13 just a moment ago. Well, it only took us eight years, Mr. Speaker, to place a person on the moon. Surely, Mr. Speaker, if we can place a person on the moon in eight years, we can complete these projects in less than 30 years. Mr. Speaker, I'm honored at this time to yield to my colleague, who is a co-sponsor of this piece of legislation, who serves us well in the Congress of the United States on uh, the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, a real stalwart when it comes to serving his constituents and standing up for the people of our city, our county, our state, and indeed our country. I yield now to the Honorable Gene Green, Member of Congress. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my colleague for yielding to me, and thank you for last Friday. I was able to be in your district there along Bray's Bio, where uh, in the Westbury area, in the Meyerland area, and see it. Uh, that happened in your district in southwest Houston, but it also happened the same thing in my district in north Houston and east Houston. We, not as much as some of the tragedies in other parts of the county, but we have hundreds of homes that have been flooded. On April 18th, the city of Houston in Harris County, Texas, was subjected to paralyzing flooding with, with, that claimed the lives of our citizens and required the rescue of 1,200 more. Approximately 2,000 housing units were flooded and we're currently working to figure out where to house these folks who cannot return to their homes. This is a second major flooding disaster Houston has experienced in the last six months and the city is expecting uh, additional rain and thunderstorms this week. Residents of our congressional districts, as well as my colleagues' member districts, have been severely affected, and we must stop the needless loss of life. The President has recognized the significance of the tra catastrophe and fulfilled a request for disaster declaration. Now it's the job of Congress to help our constituents. I've worked closely with my neighbor and friend, Representative Al Green, to introduce the Tax Day Flood Supplemental Funding Act. The legislation would provide $311 million to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers for construction and, in many cases, completion of our bios and flood control projects. Flooding is not new in Houston, we've learned, but we've learned how to control it. Our bio system has saved countless of lives and millions of dollars in damage since uh, being created. Unfortunately, due to the consistent budget pressure, the Army Corps of Engineers cannot adequately fund these projects that need to be finished. This bill would ensure that our federal, state, and local authorities have the resources necessary to expedite the flood control projects we know protect people and property. Additionally, I want to make sure folks on the ground have the information they need to get back into their homes. If residents are subject to flood damage, please report flood damage by calling 311, downloading the Houston 311 app, and visit Houston311.org to submit flood damage reports. Residents must file an insurance claim with their home or their auto insurance company for damage they've incurred. Failure to file an insurance claim may affect your eligibility for the federal assistance because by law, FEMA cannot provide money for losses that is covered by insurance. Also, it's important to know that if Spanish-speaking households have children that are U.S. citizens or legal permanent residents, FEMA can, will assist you. Before submitting your application, folks should have the following information ready. Their Social Security number, their home and auto insurance information, flood damage information, personal financial information, and personal contact information. You can apply by phone for FEMA assistance. You can call 1-800-621-3362. Again, that's 1-800-621-FEMA, F-E-M-A. 1-800-621-3362. FEMA can offer two types of assistance, housing assistance, temporary housing, money to help repair or replace your primary residence. Non-housing needs include medical, dental, funeral costs, clothing, household items, tools, home fuel, disaster-related moving and storage and replacement of a disaster-damaged vehicles. After 24 hours, FEMA will follow up. You need to follow up with FEMA. 
A FEMA inspector should contact you within 10 to 14 days. Ms. Speaker, we can help the victims in our neighborhoods, and we must help them. I urge this body to pass this emergency funding legislation so we won't have this tragedy again while we're trying to get people out of their water and back into their homes and back into a regular life. And again, I want to thank my colleague for having the special order tonight. And again, uh, our office and all our congressional offices who are impacted across Houston, whether they be Republican or Democrat, who are here to serve you and serve our constituents. And thank my colleague. And I thank you for uh, sharing the time with us tonight. And I especially thank you for coming into the 9th Congressional District, uh, your neighboring district, and being of assistance to my constituents, because as we do this, we really assist each other. And I would want to, if I may, magnify, amplify uh, what you said about um, this uh, not being partisan. You didn't use that exact terminology. But this really is not a partisan effort. Uh, this is something that impacts people. Uh, Democrats, Republicans have been impacted by these storms. Rich and poor alike have been impacted by these storms. Doesn't matter what your gender is. Doesn't matter what your nationality is. If you've been in Houston, Texas, when these storms have hit, you've been impacted by these storms. So tonight, Mr. Speaker, I do think it appropriate that we say more about these storms to give some indication as to what we have to cope with in Houston, Texas. Houston, we do have a problem. But again, we also have a solution, H.R. 5025. So let's say just a bit more about the problem. Let's talk about the damages in terms of cost. In 2015, we had the Memorial Day flood. And in 2016, we had the Tax Day flood. I'm going to compare the two. And in so doing, you can see not only do we have damages occasionally, it appears that we're starting to have these damages quite regularly. The damages and costs for 2015 Memorial Day flood, approximately $3 billion in damages. Mind you now, this bill will cost $311 million. We had $3 billion in damages just for the Memorial Day flood alone in 2015. A billion is still 1,000 million. 1,000 million. So we had $3,000 million worth of damages from this Memorial Day flood in 2015. The Tax Day flood of 2016 brought us $5 billion as an estimate of damages. $5 billion. All of these are estimates. Nobody knows the exact number. $5 billion. $5 billion in 2015, another $5 billion in 2016, another $3 billion in 2015. That's $8 billion. Mr. Speaker, the $8 billion happens to be about 25 times, 25.72 times, the $311 million. The point is, why don't we spend the money up front? You've heard the term, pay me now, pay me later. Why not pay the cost to prevent some of this flooding as opposed to the cost of repairs after the floods have taken place? And it's interesting to note that these appropriation dollars that we are talking about are going to be spent. These are not dollars that will never be spent on these projects in Houston. What we're trying to do is not allow the projects to be prolonged such that other things are impacted in our city. We want the projects to be completed as expeditiously as possible. And there will be many more reasons why that I will call to your attention in just a moment. One will be deaths. With the Memorial Day flood, our research indicates that approximately four people were killed. Four people lost their lives in floodwaters or as a result of flooding. In 2016, with the tax day flood, that number doubled to eight people losing their lives. We have an opportunity to do something to save lives. There are other things that can be done to help us save lives as well. But these things, working with these projects that the Corps of Engineers already has on its docket, has on its agenda, is working on. Finishing these projects can indeed help us to save lives. Let's talk about the rainfall so that you can get some sense of how much water inundates our city. In 2015, we had 11 inches of rain. 
Uh, that's a lot. In 2016, we had 17 inches of rain. In 2016, that amounted to about 240 billion gallons of rain. That's a lot of water in one place at one time. The rescues, my colleague alluded to people being rescued. Well, in 2015, we had 531 water rescues. In 2016, 1,200 high water rescues took place. And this is a good point for me, Mr. Speaker, a good place for me to commend the newly elected mayor of Houston, Texas, the Honorable Sylvester Turner, who is doing an outstanding job, a stellar job, uh, just uh, arrived on the job, but he has really done well with the circumstances that he's had to deal with, so I commend him. I also would like to mention now the homes that have been damaged. In 2015, the estimate is that about 6,000 homes were damaged with the Memorial Day flood. With the flood in 2016, the tax day flood, tax day, called tax day because it was the last day to file your income taxes. Uh, in 2016, on tax day, we had 6,700. 700 more homes, approximately, were damaged in 2016 than 2015. As you can see, we have a problem in Houston. Well, let's talk about vehicular damage. Uh, in Houston, in 2015, the Memorial Day flood, we had about 10,000 vehicles damaged. 10,000. Imagine being on your way home, and you have this water to inundate the city. That means that you cannot continue to, to traverse the city. You have to take shelter. You have to stop. And you try to get your water into a place uh, wherein you have high terrain. Unfortunately, in Houston, most places are at sea level and a good many are below sea level. And as a result, when we have these types of conditions, we will have damages that will occur and many cars will be a part of these damages. So in 2015, approximately 10,000 vehicles. And in 2016, 2016, approximately 40,000 vehicles damaged. 2016, 40,000 vehicles. Now, if it takes about $10,000 per vehicle to repair these vehicles or to replace the vehicles, $10,000 per vehicle, that is approximately, in a hypothetical sense, $40 million. So the cost, Mr. Speaker, of to vehicle repairs alone exceeds the amount that we need for the bill to take preventive measures such that we won't get as many cars in this condition. And I say as many simply because uh, I will reiterate what I said earlier. We will never eliminate all of the flooding. We can never do enough but we do have a duty to do all that we can, and we can spare a good many people from being stranded in vehicles, a good many who lose their lives, I might add, as well. Loss of power, meaning electrical power. In 2015, we had 88,000 customers to lose power. That's a lot, 88,000 people without power. Surely we've had more than this in many other places. I'm not saying that this loss of power uh, would uh, in any way compare to some of our other circumstances that we've had to cope with in different places in our country. But I do want you to know that this happens whenever we have these conditions. So year after year after year, the number adds up. Because while we had 88,000 customers in 2015, in 2016, we had 123,000 people to lose power. 88,000 the year earlier, 123,000. It adds up. Houston has a problem, but Houston has a solution. The solution is H.R. 5025, a bill that would accord $311 million to complete projects that are already being worked on in Houston, Texas. Money that is already going to be spent by virtue of the projects having been appropriated. So we have to do this. Why not do this now or as quickly as we can, save lives, save money, and create jobs? Let's now talk about FEMA assistance. Uh, on the Memorial Day flood of 2015, $57 million was paid out uh, for FEMA to, from FEMA to persons who were suffered flood damages. For the 
of tax day flood, we have yet to determine this because we're still in the process of getting FEMA into the city to assist us. And if I may say so, I want to thank the President of the United States of America, the Honorable Barack Obama. I want to thank the Governor of the State of Texas. I thank the Governor for immediately responding and asking and asking the President to, de to declare certain areas in the state of Texas disaster areas. The Houston area has been declared a disaster area. Harris County is one of the areas so declared. Well, Harris County happens to be, for the most part, within Houston, Texas. Houston is over 600 square miles. It literally almost consumes Harris County. So <clears throat> we have to realize that the governor did a great thing, in my opinion, uh, he's a Republican, by the way. And the president did a great thing, in my opinion. He's a Democrat for edification purposes. These two people, one Republican, one Democrat, they've worked to make sure that we get FEMA in, that we get all of the aid that we can into the area as quickly as we can so that people can receive assistance. There are people who are going to need shelter. It's estimated that out in the Greenspoint area, 1,000, this is the area where my colleague Sheila Jackson Lee happens to uh, be the representative uh, from, uh, 1,800 apartments have flood damages, 1,800. And we got some 400 workers at the time I received this intelligence out there helping to make repairs. These workers are going to be paid for the jobs that they are doing. That's additional cost. We had more than 150 families to need accommodations, and they'll need these accommodations for perhaps as much as three weeks. This could end up costing us an additional $150,000. These are all costs that we can uh, mitigate, that we can reduce. We may not eliminate them, but we can reduce these costs. In the Maryland area, uh, this is an area that was hit hard when we had the Memorial Day flood. And now, when we have this tax day flood, uh, we're talking about within a year, we have people who are just moving back into their homes, just moving back into their homes, and they are flooded again. And this area and the people of this area have sent out a clarion call for help. They've sent the hue and cry, not only to the Congress, but also to the Corps of Engineers, also to the county commissioners. They want the city council, the state. They want us to do something about this problem. Houston has a problem, but Houston has a solution. H.R. 5025 is that solution. In that Maryland area that I'm speaking of, uh, there lives a family, the Tice family. And I want to express my gratitude to the Tice family because when we set out to visit with people in the area and call these problems uh, to the attention of uh, our cities uh, on a citywide basis by publishing these problems, uh, that Tice family opened the doors of their home to us so that we could come in and meet at their home. We didn't have to do it, but I'm appreciative that they opened the doors of their home. And I'm especially appreciative uh, as it relates to this family, Mr. Speaker, because this family... The Tice family, they have a son who's being held captive in Syria as I speak. This family is suffering the, the, the problems associated with somebody that they love dearly, their son being held captive in Syria, and they get flooded. Fortunately, this time, they barely escaped, but they had to do mitigation. They had to raise uh, their, their, their floors. They had to do things so that they would not get flooded. And I'm calling on us in the Congress to please, let's help the many families who will suffer again. This is not going to be the last time that I will come to the floor with this bill if we don't get the help this time. I assure you that within the foreseeable future, we will have a similar circumstance. How do you know, Al Green? How do you know you're going to have a similar circumstance? Well, I know because between... 1996 and 2014, we had 86 days of flooding and or flash flooding in Houston Harris County. That averages to four to five days uh, of flooding each year. This is not NOT. This is not a problem that is going away. So we can resolve it with 20, uh, this time with uh, HR 5025, or I'll be back to the floor and I'll be calling this problem to our attention again 
We'll be talking about more damages to homes. We'll be talking about cars that have been flooded and in need of repair. And we will be talking about, unfortunately, and I pray that I am entirely wrong, we'll be talking about lives that have been lost. And we'll be talking about how we could have then, how we could have now, how we could have done things to avoid some of these uh, consequences. These consequences can be mitigated, and it's up to us to take the affirmative action to do so. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I do want to thank the leadership for allowing us this time on the floor tonight. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for being very generous as well. I'd like to thank the co-sponsors of this legislation, uh, H.R. 5025. Many have signed on to it. I think that in a few short days, we have nearly 50 co-sponsors, and we'll be asking others to sign on to H.R. 5025. And in thanking the leadership, I am asking that we have an opportunity to please let us now at some point either bring the bill to the floor or let's incorporate it into some of the supplemental relief that we will be according persons uh, in the immediate future. Houston has a problem, but H.R. 5025 can be a great part of the solution. Mr. Speaker, I thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields.